everybody, welcome back to week two of the day trader course. This is the continuation from Daniele. I'm going to do a deep dive into Sierra charts, creating chart books and creating all the charts that we have and use in the day trading course. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Let's just log in to Sierra charts as you should be fully set up at this stage. Bring this guy over here as we're logging in. And we are going to create our chart book from scratch. This is the chart book that you would have received in the week one from the, from the, um, the PDF. So we're going to start and we're going to create the ES chart book from scratch, basically. So step one is to open a new chart book. We simply go to file. Open chart book. Um, oh, sorry. No, we're not going to open one of the old ones. We're going to create a new one from scratch. So we're going to go to new chart book. Sorry, my mistake. So new chart book. Um, for this, we just want to have a double check on our global settings and our time zone to make sure that we are set to New York and we are set to New York time zone. Because as we go through this creation, we are going to want our indicators all operating correctly and opening and um, um, populating the charts uh, at the right times, basically session profiles, etc., etc. We're going to be getting into all that stuff right now. But let's start at the start. And first, we want to create a chart, a chart which we're going to work with. So we have it set. This is ES, is the current front month, and we just want to open an intraday chart. So this is our intraday chart for the ES. We just wait a couple of minutes for this to download its historical data here. Um, I will probably cover and overcover some of the stuff that Daniele already went in, but I'm just going to take this step by step by step and make sure that we cover everything entirely. So anything that's previously been covered, I'm probably going to cover some of it again and so on and so forth so, to make sure that you have everything you need uh, to get going with Sierra charts. It can be a little bit uh, intimidating at the beginning, but it is definitely worth it once you get stuck in and you have this understanding of it. It's super, super powerful here. So um, I like to have my range. Okay, it's already set. I like to have my range set up to interactive scale range personally, and I like to have it set to the constant range. That just means as the price goes, it'll change. I, I don't like the automatic function. I find it a little bit uh, slow, but then each to their own. So to change those functions, uh, you just right click on your mouse on the, the right hand side over here on the price um, price uh, identifier and you can set it up as you wish and as you wish you can also scale the bottom by left clicking and dragging in and out as you wish to squeeze the chart up and squeeze the chart out or roll with the roller on your mouse as you wish um, so to get into this chart I don't like these bar charts and I don't like the kind of dark mode you can leave it in dark mode as you wish but I prefer to set it in in light mode and that's the chart book you would have gotten so we're going to set all these into into light mode to do that we simply go to chart actually uh, first we'll get into change in the chart into a range bar so we'll do that first you can either go to chart up here and you can go to the chart settings you can also just press f5 as as related here so i recommend to everybody and this is this is the easiest way to learn with cr chart cr chart is super user friendly with keyboard shortcuts just have a little post-it post -it book and start sticking up your little um, your little keyboard shortcuts because they're super, super useful, um, time-saving uh, when you're working with CR charts. So you can either go up to the top tabs and go to charts, chart settings, or you can just click on the chart and click F5. So when you click F5, it'll open up this window. And in here, we have uh, several different things. So in here, we have the days to load. I like to have this. Actually, you don't. You, you don't need to have it a lot. It's just a... a um, what way you use the replay function, the sim function in here. I like to have it uh, with a couple of hundred days on it because I like to tra trade previous days, uh, previous major um, incidences in the market, we'll say. So I like to go back. And if you are going to do that, just to make sure that you go back to the actual uh, contract month that's, that's relevant, just to be careful of that. So um, I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to change this to a 400 bar chart or over a year, basically. 400, sorry, 400 days to load. Um, down here we have the actual symbol. We can change this into any you wish. Um, if you're changing a different um, a different asset, totally up to you. Up here we have intraday chart. We'll be changing this because um, for accuracy with some of our studies, we want a, a historical chart and a time-based chart. 
as it is at the moment this is set to days minutes seconds per bar which is zero days one minute and zero seconds we'll be changing that now in a second we want to change this session time to our new york session time and we want to ch change the evening session into our globex evening session then any chart we duplicate from this chart these settings will automatically be saved and over here we have our type of bars. I'll be changing ours to a candlestick bars. You can come in here and have a look and change yours to whichever you wish as you go. <clears throat> so uh, that is the first tab in here. So moving on to the second tab. In here is where there are several different um, boxes to tick and tick off and on as you wish uh, going through these in your own time. You don't need to change this use a uh, global time zone because this chart will automatically be set to your global settings which is currently set to New York. So you don't need to worry about that. That's only if you wanted to change it for a specific chart. We don't need to worry about that. So advanced settings then in here. In here, we'll be putting in our, our title name bar. I'll, take, I'll make this a 10 tick range bar for our first bar. <coughs> Excuse me. A 10 tick range bar. Uh, whoop, let's go back here. 10 tick. Perfect. Oh, sorry. ES. Let's put an identifier at the front as well. E Yes, 10 tick. And if you want to use this title, you just need to check the box to make sure you use it. Nothing else really to change in here. This is all going to um, populate as you wish. Later on in the module, we'll be covering uh, this box down here. Super valuable for uh, linking all your tools. Danielle already mentioned it. And in here also for linking certain aspects of your charts together so that they work in tandem beside each other. We'll cover that in a, in a later module. Uh, not in a later module. In a, 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 later in this video, I should say. So, uh, advanced settings again, worth having a quick look through this in your own time. And then finally, alerts, which uh, as Danielle also went through, so I won't get into it. So back to our main settings, we want to go in here and to create our range bar chart, we simply want to come down, we see our menu here. Again, a lot of these are work, well, some of them at least are worth playing with on your own time. The volume per bar, not a bad uh, chart to play with number of trades per bar is very similar to our range bar standard in ticks Which is what we're going to be using and you can play around with many of these other same kind of a bar for every Everything really, but I am going to currently pick range bar in ticks um, For the for the um, footprint chart you will see a little bit later We will be using the reversal bar in ticks, but for now range bar in ticks we're going to leave it at 10 ticks and we're just going to change our session times next so changing our session times and we're going to save all these settings so that they'll um, go on to every chart when we go into our next chart after chart so we just say i just changed this to a minute before the globex session begins 1759.59 and then we create the globex session or the evening session which is 1800 zero 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 uh, 929.59 which is a, a, a minute before the New York Open basically <clears throat> so they, they're, they're complementing each other as they roll over and this will um, be used to populate our volume profiles and our different studies like our opening range and our open time and so on and so forth as we do our other studies later in this module so with that, that's it. We just simply, oh, and last thing, actually, before I go, we just want to set it to candlestick bars. Well, I like to see candlestick bars. And I just hit apply and hit OK. So now we have our first chart. 